This is Gading Serpong, population 120,000 according to this article by Media Indonesia. Public transport, one line that tries to serve half of the city with a single bus, making a gigantic 3-hour loop with the terminus in Mall SMS. It runs every day, every 2 to 4 hours, and turns a 15-minute drive into a 2-hour bus line. At least it's free. The second line is called the Traka Shuttle Bus and it goes from Alogio, a cluster mainly built for university students, to Pradita and Women Universities. It runs every 30 minutes with two very big gaps in service. It costs 6,000 rupiah and only runs on weekdays. The third line is the R19 Angkot. Being an Angkot line, it has no set schedule, but something should arrive every 5 to 15 minutes or so, and it runs all day. Like all Angkots in Greater Jakarta, fare is based on distance, with the cheapest fare being 5,000 rupiah. Going from SMS to Super Mall Karawachi costs 6,000 rupiah. When it comes to external connections, the S11 stops near Starot Hotel, located at the entrance to Gading Serpong. The T11 and T12 are also not that far from the city. Those run all day. There's also five lines operated by three operators that run only at weekday rush hours that start in Gading Serpong. Transjakarta runs Royal Trans S13 and S14 to Tomang and Lebak Bulus. Royal Platinum runs buses to Sudirman and Kelapa Gading, though the Kelapa Gading line only has one departure a day, and Damiri runs buses to Lebak Bulus. This lack of transit that is frequent at runs all day is a problem because Gading Serpong is no longer a glorified residential area like it was 20 years ago. Being home to 120,000 people, Tangerang's largest mall, three universities, multiple offices, hotels and hospitals, and plenty of restaurants, this creates difficulties for university students, many are on a tight budget, trying to commute in for classes. Local residents also have it bad here, having a vehicle or spending excessive money on taxis is mandatory. Also, many people in Gading Serpong probably shouldn't be driving anyway. There seems to be accidents almost daily, usually someone plowing their car into a tree. Sumarekon and Paramon need to repent, because they haven't done so, evident not only by the lack of transit, but their recent road widening projects. These developers are sending themselves and all 120,000 residents to a car-centric hell full of congestion, excessive spending on transport, and dangerous roads. Of course, the solution to traffic is to make transit faster than driving, though I'm not sure if Gading Serpong and BSD are willing to cooperate and make a BRT corridor through this north-south corridor. The solution that these developers can do literally in the next couple of months is to route buses. Gading Serpong's new bus network, if they or any third party are willing to make, must fulfill two criteria. First is to connect Gading Serpong's main major trip generators with the outside world, that is Serpong Raya and Intermoda Cisal, and two, connect most housing clusters with at the minimum hourly bus service to the main shopping mall. In fact, I've designed a bus network that should fulfill those two criteria. Line 1 goes from Intermoda Tisau to Starlet topping by Ion Mall, Cubic, Carstens, Pisa Grande, SDSA, SMS, and Starlet Hotel. This is the main line, and if buses are limited, this is the one to prioritize. Line 2A goes from Starlet Hotel to SDC then making a clockwise loop, entering the Melody Lake area, going back to SDC and Starlet Hotel, also stopping by SMS. Line 2B is similar to Line 2A, but runs anti-clockwise and enters the Mozart area. Line 3 starts in Starlet Hotel, stops by SMS, M-Town, St. Carlos Hospital, Christ Cathedral, Pelican, Magior, and ending in Carstens, making a U-turn and doing this line in reverse. Line 5 starts in SDC, enters through Sangerang, Passing by Tarakanita School, Asmal Husna Mosque, SMS, and ending, and ending in Starlet Hotel. Line 6 starts in Amarillo, passing by Karelia, Bending Gading Church, SDC, SMS, and Starlet Hotel. And finally, Line 7 starts in SDC, enters by Hage, and before you say that this line will have poor ridership, the OMN dormitory is there. Exits by Hage, stopping by Beryl, Pahoa School, SMS, and finally, Starlet Hotel. Why always Starlet Hotel? Because there, you can transfer to the S11, Agrama Stikarang Porris Line, and 3 Angkot Lines. Of course, ideally, there should also be more buses to Intermoda Tisau, but with limited buses, any bus going to BSD means lower frequencies in Gading Serpong, unfortunately. Will this conflict with the R19 Angkot? Maybe, but also not really. R19 passengers are mainly Karawachi residents. There is an argument that this might actually benefit the R19 as people from Karachi have more stuff to connect to once they enter Gading Serpong. Some bus stops serve buses in both directions. How do you tell which bus is going to SMS and which is the one going to SDC for example? Simple, live bus tracking and LED displays up front like base tailing buses. 
I should also add that there must be live bus tracking, either in the Sumaricon Home app, Google Maps, Move It, or Mitra Darat. How many buses does this require? Good question, and I've prepared three options for that. First is a fleet of five buses. When buses are limited, do not spread them out. Concentrate them in line one, all of them. Until you can get line one to run every 30 minutes or less, do not allocate buses on other lines. This is about as many as in Trans Bintaro. In the 10 bus option, line one runs every 20 minutes, other lines run roughly hourly, plus minus 10 minutes or so. This is about as many buses as BSD Link. In the 25 bus option, line 1 runs every 10 minutes, while every other line runs every 20 to 30 minutes. This is on the level of Transjakarta non-BRT levels of service, and this is about as many buses as the bus networks of some smaller Indonesian cities. Also, this system doesn't even have to be free. Having a fare of 4,000 to 7,000 rupiah would be alright, though I'd also advise against going well beyond that. Many people are willing to take public transport even if it's slower than driving because it's usually way cheaper. To a point. Anyway, doing this will at least give people a choice between driving, which is expensive because of gas and the fact that you need a car, and taking a taxi, which is also expensive, or taking the motorcycle, which is not that expensive but you elevate your risk of well dying, as I've witnessed live a couple of days ago. Do it because turning a 15 minute drive into a 2 hour bus ride is not the wonderful life I was promised.